right finally hinges time they like that little steps on the on the frames as well that one's not so bad but that one's out a bit so i suspect it's the machine position of hinge you normally avoid the tenon that would be coming through here the moment it's dominoes i think to me that's just a little too high so i'm just going to drop it down just a fraction and this one about there there's no fixed rules just where you think it's right well that's what i'm going to do anyway Right, this off cut just happens to be about the size that I want, so I use that, and then it's about right there. Very slight difference between there and there won't matter, a few millimetres, as long as it's not too much. As long as it's straight across there, then my hinges should line up, and I'll make a line, put a cross next to it. That and do them all. Right, so they're all marked. So you need to put some X's next to them. It's hard to get them wrong, but no harm. It's only about 10 o'clock now, and it's already 80, 84 in here. A bit slow going in this heat. Anyway, I should have a jig up there for these hinges. I uh, found a jig, line it up to my little pencil mark, make a cut. So I've chopped all the hinges in, these aren't fixed in yet, but they fit quite nicely. Looks like they all fit, and that little lump is on the frames as well. Those ones where I just put one 
dominoing they're not so bad so this might be like an, an accumulative thing can't say it but see that one's nice that one's over a little bit and I think that one's about right so yeah don't know what that is but like I say these are these are cut in not fixed yet a bit tight down the middle better than too much too big a gap but it looks pretty parallel so what I'm going to do is put a leading edge on these and maybe plane just a fraction off before they get fixed in so this is that door from there and I want a leading edge only a few mil don't need to be a lot but what I'll do is I don't want to take anything off this edge just yet so what I'll do is get my pencil and I'll mark that edge then I'll know if I'm planing off there I want to plane down until I just just maybe just take that off fucking hot in here got a fan on got what I can open I don't know if it shows on the video, but just like my drills, I've got my finger pointing down. That helps you control it. You know, if you like that, you wobble around. But that helps you just control it. And I've got my other hand under this bit here, helping me, helping me guide it. Uh, I'm nearly ready to put screws in the hinges into the frames but it's quite obvious that this one's too tight so what I'll do is lift it up and put a pencil line on so I'm using a pencil that isn't isn't as sharp as maybe it could be I know that I want a couple of mil so let's rub that in there I'm using a pencil that isn't so sharp because I want that dark line so if I can get that back in see that dark line now sort of gives me an idea of the gap so I want to plane that down so that I've just lost the pencil line I think that's enough you could take it off both doors but you won't notice As I'll do for the moment probably needs a bit more actually but I'll see what happens when I put the hinges on because that might pull it back a little bit I might do the same to this one take off a millimetre or two Right, thankfully it's a bit cooler today. I've had a few days off. This one, the doors seem low. That one, they're not bad. But they almost seem high on that side. But I think I'm going to leave them, leave them at that for the moment. I've got all this to plane what I've been avoiding because that's energetic work backwards and forwards through the planers but it's a bit cooler today like I say so I'll get that done right these are the shelf sides normally I'd put a flat face on then put a square edge on 
But these boards are already pretty flat and I want maximum thickness. So, I've been lazy as well. So, you see if I pull that up, can't really do it with one hand, but you see the gap closes. And they're pretty straight across there. They all are. Close enough anyway. So, get a few biscuits in those, get them glued together. Then when they're dry, I'll just be able to put them straight through the thicknesser. Get a clean face on. These are the sides, so I need one good face. I'll plane it both sides, but I need one good face. I'm going to put biscuits in here mainly for alignment. They do add a bit of strength, but they're mainly alignment. So one there, I'll put one in the middle, one in between, one there, one there. I want to try and keep these in order. So I'm going to be moving them. So one, one. I'll do the same. Two, three, four. Down. Extractors hooked up to the Hoover, which is down there. And my vacuum bucket thing, cyclone thing, hoovers plugged into this. So anything I plug into this machine makes the hoover work. I've still got it set for 18mm. I don't really move it that much, so it'll be slightly off centre. But like I say, it's more for alignment than strength. And these are number 10 biscuits. It's all I buy really. You could use 20s or zeros, but number 10s work well for. You can find anything. It's not 18 mil, 18 mil stuff. I think that's 15, but you know what I mean. Now I'll get these cut, stack them to one side, get them to glue together. I'm just going to use PVA. Uh, I put four clamps on, I've just been a bit lazy putting one in the middle. And it's bowed down there because I didn't put a straight edge on this edge. But these ones, these ones are pretty flat through there. So it should be fine. But I'm going to leave them overnight. Some sweating cobs in here. It's cooler today but it's still 80 degrees. Near enough. Right, so these are those pieces that I clamped up yesterday. See the glue isn't completely dry on these bits. Don't mind that. When you wipe it off sometimes you get like a little little valley where it, where it shrinks back. I don't mind. Just run belt sander over them before I plane them. These are the shelf parts. They're pretty straight already, that way. But I want them to be as straight as I can get them, so I am going to plane them on the jointer first. But they're too wide for my jointer, so I'll show you what I'm going to do. And it's pissing it down today. And it's pissing it down today. It's a lot cooler. Look at that. It's more like it. 65, 66. I can run around without sweating my bollocks off.
Oh, they're pretty straight now. When I was planing over that, I wasn't putting any more pressure on than I want to, than I need to, should I say. If the wood's bent like that and you push it down, you plane it flat, but then it just springs back up so it's still bent. So you just want to let it float over the top. That's why I waxed the top of this so that it slides nice and smooth. So all I've got to do is put as much pressure on as I need to, to keep it going through. I haven't bothered putting a square edge on at the moment. I'll put them through the thicknesser, get them down to something like size, put a square edge on. Uh, to plane these ones I've got a piece of MDF here. Could have done with being maybe a fraction wider but it's okay. I'll turn that all over, put it through the thicknesser. So I plane that edge, that one, put that board on, turn them over, plane that, and then these, after I put them through the jointer, I've just put them through so the, the parallel thickness, I haven't measured it because everything's going back through the planer again. But these, I'll put through the planer at that thickness, and just remove that and I'm not bothered if it doesn't remove it all because like I say once these are glued together they're going to go through the thickness of again anyway so I'll just run that through the thickness of that way up So I've got two smooth sides, you see on this one, it took it off flush there, but it's still got a bit of a ridge there. I'm not bothered because the side that is flat, uh, I haven't done it, but the side that is flat, I've put a pencil mark. So I'll be working off that side, i put a straight edge on now so that I can glue them together. Right, so what I've got now is one good face on both pieces and one good edge, one square edge. That will glue together on there. Same as I did on the on the sides. But I'm just gonna put a four in this one. I'm going to leave them overnight again. I put the thinner bits on the inside partly to protect that square edge that I put on but also when you're clamping things up if you've got this choice then put your thinner ones inside because there's a chance that they'll bend but this wide plank you know you, you've got good clamping force all the way across you don't have to put so many clamps in. You know, those two wide boards are squashing those thinner boards, if that makes sense. 
leave them open out again.